Welcome to the second video of the Java FX series. Today we are going to do a video on making a calculator with a node function. So what this is what this means is that we are going to have a input of year and month and then we are going to show the calendar of that particular specified month of the year and then we are going to implement a node function as well for every single day so uh, these three imports here are basically standard to every single GUI in JavaFX and then you have a label button text field text area so the text field is going to be the input of our year and month and the text area is going to be the showing and the input of the nodes for the days and here you have a layout so everything in a layout is have something to do with panes or boxes so we'll see that later and we have an input of image so what this means is that uh, we need to if we want to make our program look beautiful we might want to have image inside so you can see this entire background it is the image so we want to modify our text so that there's an input of text here and then there's an input output here to allow us to read and write from and to a text file to record our notes and then we have the geometry uh, this is going to be used as a orientation kind of uh, stuff usually but uh, we don't use it in our our application today and we don't use the color as well so you can see there's a unused import node here okay so uh, similar to the first program it's going to extend application so this what this means is that in java application is a class and this thing itself is a class but it spans from this class and inside this class you have a start method a method called start but it does nothing so you need to override the start method in order to tell the program to do something okay i because this is just a personal preference but i like to declare my uh formattings uh the gui elements outside the start method what this is going to do is that if you declare it here the scope is going to be this entire simple calendar class so you can access it in other methods also so if you have, if you have like text area or text field that that might get accessed by other methods you need to declare them here and then you can see uh, there's a vertical box holding the labels and buttons there's a grid pane label text field label text field 
So this ball is going to be the year and month and its respective field to input. And this is going to be a label. And then we have a grid pane here to hold the buttons that represent the days. And then this text area is going to be the area where the node for every single day is displayed. And then you have a button. The button is declared as an array of buttons. For now, it is an empty array. Okay, so inside the void start function, what this, what this try means is that this is actually a try catch block. It comes together. So what this try catch do is that in case if you need a any uh, method or object that will throw exceptions, uh, actually classes, if you have any classes that will throw exception, you need to implement try catch. So there's two ways to implement try catch. You can either throw them at the start. So what this start means is not the not the start method, but I mean here. Throw exception. Any exception. You can have found not found exception, you can have IO exception, you can have malfunction URL exception. There's a lot of them. So this is one way you can do it. Another way is that you can implement them. So you can in implement them inside the method. So you can do it, do it like this. Okay, so what it's going to mean is that it's going to try running the stuff inside here. Now the main thing that demand the need for a try catch is this actually this one file input string so in case it will try to find the file here so in case it didn't find the file manage to find this file inside this relative uh, path it's going to throw a file not found exception so you can actually see that you have a catch file not found exception here so the syntax it looks like this uh, looks like this so you're going to try Inside it, inside the parameter, you can write, uh, you can declare other functions. For example, if you want to read from a file, from a file, you can have a buffered reader, reader, and then you have a curly bracket, and then you can catch. So you can, one way you can catch is that you can just simply say exception. So exception and a variable to hold it. This is one way. The other way, if you want to implement it more thoroughly, you can go uh, found not found exception, and then you can uh, have another uh, variable that holds it, and then you can do something inside. You can also implement multiple catches. So if you have a method that will throw multiple kind of exceptions, you can also have I O exception so this is another kind of exception then you can do anything inside what this is going to mean is that anything in try block throws an exception it won't crash the program usually if you don't if you don't have this the program will go crashed so it don't crash a program it catches the exception it do whatever supposed to be done inside the catch block block and if this is not the exception we want it will go check the other exceptions so if any of the exceptions is the wanted one, it will go and do it. So in our program, it's going to be, if there are no exceptions, then it's good. It continues to execute all, all of this. If it indeed throws an exception, it's going to come here. It's going to tell us that image cannot be found inside the console, not the program, not the GUI itself inside the console. And then it will not do anything. So it will, it will just skip past this point and not do anything so it won't crash the entire program okay so so we have a image object here we, we have a file input stream we take in a file and then this is this itself is a image object so this is a 
file input stream, it takes in this file and then it specifies the width of the picture, the height of the picture and this is this is actually uh, keeping the ratio of our so the image object is going to be in the parentheses it's going to be the image file then it's going to be the width the height uh, keep ratio and smooth so in this case we don't want to we don't want the both of these options here so we just do it first and then you have a background image because in an image object by itself if you add into any pane it's going to be treated like it's a children of the pane so it's just going to take up a space of its own so you need to put it as a background image and then put the background image as a background object so this is this is the usual format for you to do this so you just put an image here you just put it here and these are uh, ordinary formats so you don't want them to repeat on any of the axes and this is just a usual format we use okay so this is this is a special one this is actually a set style using the css kind of string and this is a border color so you can have other other also you can have background color so if you want to learn more about this you can go uh, see how people do css formattings okay so here you specify the color so there are a lot of built-in colors you can you can try to search it up on google and this is what this is going to do is that it's going to let your elements to have a transparent background so if for example if i don't have this line the text field is going to be having a an opaque background so you want to set the background to NULL and then you want to set whatever font they are displaying to be following our set format so it's going to be like this so this font object is going to be in a text style of name Korea new and it's going to be having a font weight of bold and it's going to be in size 20 so uh, this is just setting its fonts so you can see this is a set font method set background method set style method and then you have a set min width so what is what is this going to do is that it's going to at least have a width of that much so if you don't have this your program might get a bit uh, messy so if you have this you can see that both of the text box they start at a similar vertical pattern they start at the same vertical orientation so this is what it means and then uh, you have a dot add method so you need to add them into a grid pane so a grid pane uh, it put things in a grid in a matrix like grid so you can declare you can put them in a column and row this is uh, already set in the last video but in case you haven't seen it it's going to be like this it's going to be the element you want then it's going to be the column then it's going to be the row then it's going to be the column span then it's going to be the row span what does the span mean is that if you have an element at the second column and second row but you have a two column span and one row span is going to be a rectangle taking up two columns and one row okay and then you need to this is a grid pane we need to add that grid pane to a vertical box so you are going to add the grid pane uh, the label and the, another grid pane at the bottom so this is this is actually a label, label, text field, text field, and button inside a grid pane. And Sunday until Saturday is a label, and bottom here is another grid pane. Okay, then you want to create a new scene, and you want to put a V box into the scene with a preset uh, size. And then you want to set this scene to our main stage here. So this is declared here, 
you can put it any name you want. You just make sure that the stage is here because it's an is a stage object. Okay, so you just put the stage. Okay, so that's all for the void start. Uh, you also need to oh you also need to set the background with the background object here. So you set the background as the background for this uh, V box, and then you this this one is giving the directing the action event to this check press method. So what it's going to do is that method our main file is this button. So when, once this button is pressed, it's going to fire an action event. So it's going to be catched by this and it's going to direct it to activate this method. You can also you can also have one of these uh, setting style commands in here. It depends. It's very uh, you can have a very versatile usage. Okay, so once the button is pressed, it's going to direct us into check pressed. So you want to you want you want them to be filled with some number. So you don't you cannot have them to be empty. Else the integer pass in function will be wrong. So main three and main four is actually both of this text field here. So we'll read the string. So this one it lets the program to get the string. And then what this means is that it replaced any white space of one and more white spaces to non-white space spaces. So if you have like white spaces in between your numbers, it's going to not pass correctly in the integer pass in. So you want to be uh you want to be specific with this. Okay, so this limitation is actually uh this limitation is actually done by our implementation of the calendar class. So we'll talk about this later. So we implement a, a instance of object of this class. So this class is our user defined class is about the calendar. And we want to get the total day in that month and the start day specifying which day does the first day start on. So it can be like it can be Monday. So as for example uh Tuesday January 25 uh this this January 10, 2022 is start on Saturday so this is what it means it start from Saturday and it had 31 days okay then you have all the buttons from 1 to 31 and then you have this uh this is actually unifying the format the width and height of each of the buttons and it sets the background of the button to transparent so if you don't have the width and height it is going to be not clean you can see it's going to be cramped okay so if you have a proper width and height it is going to be neat so it's going to be neat like this. You can see as I hover over some of the buttons, it is actually in a in a style, special style, and when the mouse left the button, it quits. This is actually done by another formatting down below where I will show later. Hey. Um so what this means is that this is a special one. Uh, since we want our function, our program to be able to check multiple months without closing down, we need to clear out the buttons that were added in this grid pane. So what this means is that if you run over and over again checking a lot of months in one go, if you don't clear out them, these buttons are going to be repeatedly added into the grid pane. It's going to be causing a duplication of children error. So it's going to have, for example, it's going to have multiple buttons of one in there. So it's going to cause error. It's going, that's called a duplication of children. So you want to clear them out. Okay, then you have a day control. So this is going to be limiting the day. Uh, it's going to be limiting as long as it's smaller than the total day, it's going to add some buttons. Okay, so this is actually responsible for the first row in the calendar it's 
going to be responsible for the first row. So you can see that the condition is only up to 7 and it follows the start date. So you can see add according, according to the index and the column. So the changing column in this grid pane. And you can see this is a control variable that is increment every time you added something inside. So for example, if you have like another month, it's going to be started on Wednesday, so it's going to be here. And this loop is going to execute it four times. Okay. And down here, this is for the rest of the buttons. So uh, this is going to be controlling the rows as until it's reached the seventh day. So if it's reached the seventh day, it's going to be going to the next row. Okay, and then this outer loop is going to be limiting the row and you can see this is a algorithm here so this is something you something is very easy is just think the logic okay so this is you add the button and you increment the control variable so as long as the control day is smaller than the total day you do this right so later this is something uh, used for when we want to do the notes I'll come back to this later. Okay, so this entire thing, either Howard, either Howard, this is the, but this is the styling set. So what what this means is is that when the mouse enter the button, it will set set the style with a Howard. So remember that set style takes in a string as a format function. So if you have a string, and you have a Howard here predefined, it's going to be background color of beige and this idol is going to be having a background color of transparent so whenever a mouse entered it's going to be having a color whenever the mouse exited it's going to be transparent so this is what it means why do you can see there's are index indexes here why is it that we don't do a loop the reason is that in the action event handling thing you must have a final kind of variable. You cannot have a moving variable. So in a action event uh, handling, variables uh, indexes must be final value. So you must have a value. You cannot have like you cannot have like in a loop and then you use a variable to control the value no so you have you have to have all these different uh, long things okay so the next thing we are in our program what we are going to do the notes is that we are going to implement the name of the files in a matter of year four years two month and day and then you have a dot txt so that's going to be a text file so for example year 2022 month of the second month and the 20 22nd day so it's going to be the file name is going to be like this so in our implementation if the month is smaller than 10 we're going to add a zero before the month so for example is if the month is nine we after adding the zero is going to be zero nine just to make the file names consistent in length and make it neat and then you call when you call this so this is this button is actually having the content of the first day so it's going to be 01 so this is actually just a simple string concatenation so you add a 01 to the length to the length of the string there so every single string here every single string passes over the function passes to the function is going to be eight characters in length okay so the this format makes sure that every single day you have is a unique one okay so this is this is this function is for the when we are opening the notes so when we open the notes for the first day in 2020 and the month of july we can type something here up 
date. Okay, so you can. This is actually a uh, input input we input I implemented in the in the in here. So you can see you can have a print line here. So it's going to be outputting the outputting to the console. So this is for the convenience of the coder to check out how the program is running. So you can see. Uh, the month of July has a start day of 3 on Wednesday Okay, and then we are accessing the file of 2020 in year, July in month and 1 in day So it's going to be 1 And then it says that read file failed, file not found It's because that we don't have any any records uh, prior to this thing Okay, so it's saying to create a new file so new file created and then it has a it has one line in the content so if we open this file now it's going to be accessing this file and then it says the number of line in file is one okay so if we add another another line of load uh, since the wrap text option is open if you continue typing down here Although it goes to a new line, it still counts as one line. So, what it does is that it will recognize a front slash n as a line breaker, as a line terminator, so anything you want to call it. So, it's going to be recognized with the input key of the enter. Okay, so this this represents that your program, your node have two lines now. Okay, you click update, it will take in the record. And if you press on it, you will have two lines. Okay, nice. Um, okay, so in this notes open, since we also have a the image input, so we need to implement this try catch. The other the other stuff are all the same. And separate text to be true. If you don't do it. If you don't do it, it's going to be having a horizontal scroll bar. So it's going to have a horizontal scroll bar here, and it's trying to trying to fit the first line all into one. So in order to make the entire thing user friendly, you need to set wrap text to true. So it will wrap over if it goes over this width. This is important in making a neat program. Okay, so you want to set the background to null, you want to set the font style, and then you want to uh, get the file name here. So what the what the file we're opening here, we are opening this file. And then this is our just a variable. You'll see how is that used later. Account. Okay, so in this try catch block, you can see here we have a special one. Is a is a not is a ordinary bracket instead of the curly one. So in this ordinary bracket, we actually establish a buffer reader. And inside the buffer reader, we actually need a file reader. So what this thing do is that it's going to read from this file. It's going to read from this particular string of file name. Okay. So and then it's going to be put inside this buffer reader. A buffer reader is always better than using a normal input stream because a buffer reader is as a controlled size of input and it works very good if you have if you if you deal with a database of very small objects if you have like a million different objects in a database and you want to access them in a quick manner you need to have a buffer reader and then you can set the size of the buffer reader to a wanted size for example if like all of the those small objects are going to have a uniform size of like around 512 kilobytes you can set the buffer reader to have a that size by default so it's going to make the entire reading progress a lot quicker by decreasing the overhead expenses of resources okay so uh, if I remember correctly, the default size of the buffer reader is 500 something bytes or kilobytes, I forgot. 
or uh, something around there. Okay, so while while it has the it has another line, so read line is going to be reading a whole line of the file. Increment the count. So this is basically counting the number of lines in that file. So this this here keep track of the number of the line in the file. So you can see the number of line file is two. And then we want to actually create an array of string that will hold the content of the file. So this one here it holds the content of the file. It opens another another file reader that access the same file as this. And then it will actually read the content and record into this array. Uh, this is just an ordinary catchings. Okay, so this is going to this is going to add it into the show. So the show is here is an empty string. And it's going to add it into the empty string with a stroke and a line terminator. So now the show is going to be, for example, if you have like line one is this is apple, and line two is this is orange. What the content of the show string is going to be? This is apple. And then it has a line terminator here. And then you have a this, this, orange. Okay, so this entire line, when when it's input into the when it's input into the text area, it's going to be separated by the rep text into lines. So the rep text is going to recognize recognize this and put these two things into separate lines. So this is what it means. Okay, so uh, these are just ordinary catchings. And this is when the update button is pressed, it's going to guide us to another method down here. So this is setting the setting the content we got to the text area. So when we input a year and month and when we click, it access the file, it reads from the file, count the line get the line in one string and display them into this text area so this is what the, what it means okay okay so now it's uh, just a simple get children set background you have a, another stage here so this 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 thing is another stage and then you have a new scene and you're going to launch this stage these are all just uh, simple formats okay so when the update button is pressed, this is a string we transfer to the update button. So it's going to be the file name. It's going to be our file name. And, and it's going to record how many rows in the text area. So this is our text area. Get text. The get text is going to return us a string of text in this text area. And because I told you just now that the text area is actually separated by this thing in a line. So if it encounters this string, it's going to split it. So this split it is going to actually split into arrays. So this is going to be the zero element. And this is going to be the first index. Okay, zero index, first index. So when it's this this thing is returning you an array. So what do you do to an array is that you try to count the length, the length of array that represents the number of line here. So this entire this entire syntax here is basically saying that get the string from this text area, split it by this line terminator symbol, and get the array, get the length of the array returned by this split. So finally it will give us a, an integer of how many rows in this text area. And then uh, we keep track of the rows in the text area by outputting a number. And then we try, this is another try catch block. So we want to actually write the content into the file. So we want, we want to open a file object with the specific file name. And then we, this is a file object, the name. And we put it into a file output stream. But uh, this is not good enough. 
if we want to use it conveniently, we use a buffered writer in a output stream writer. So this output stream writer is going to take in this output stream and it's going to be taken by this buffered writer. So these are all just you know syntax. So you can just uh, use this in the future, uh, make note of this, anything. Okay. So what this is going to do is that this is a special special format. So it's going to be in this format. It's going to be a type. Type and then the variable name. Oops. It's going to be the variable name. You have a colon here. And then you need to specify where you get the variable from. So the source. Okay, so this is this is going to be this is going to be the type so if you have like for integer a from uh good and this you actually initialize good to be three it's going the value of a is going to be zero one two three something like this Okay, so this this is the for loop. A for loop that is not so uh, frequently seen by beginners, coding beginners. Okay, so you want to do what you want to do is that you want to write this variable so it it gets the text and split it in accordance to this thing. So you actually have an array, you know, array of these objects line. So you get the string, you implement it, you write it into the file, and you go to the new line. So think of think of this as a file. So you're going to write the line. This is echo. And you want to go to the new line to write something else. So this is what it means. You want to go to a new line to write something other else, something else. You want to write something else. So you, you you have three lines now, so every time you write a line, you want to go to the new line. And then after all of this is done, you want to close the buffer writer. If you don't close the buffer writer, the modifications won't be saved. So this thing, this close, is actually includes saving the changes you just made. So this is important. Okay, so once you close, it's done. The recording, the entire recording process is done. And then this is just a try catch. Okay. Um, this file creation is going to be called somewhere. Uh, yeah, here. So in case, in case the file does not exist, we cannot find the file. It's going to call a file creation. So it's going to create this file. If the file doesn't exist, create it. This is what it means. So in case it it is not found, or in case it has an input output exception, it's going to create the file. This can occur if the file is corrupted as well, if I remember correctly. Okay, so in case the file creation is caught and it gets the name, it tries to access. So uh, this is actually a file object. I call it new file. And this is a method, create new file. It's a boolean method. So it creates new file with this uh, name given. So in this relative path cost, uh, it's going to create a new file, and if it's successfully created, it returns true. Otherwise, it return false. Okay, so if it's true, it's going to read. It's going to tell you new file created. And actually, uh, this line is not used. Ignore it. Okay, else not created. Exception. Okay, exception. I think this occurs if the either the directory does not exist or corruption occurs in the memory. Okay, don't. After after all of this, uh, finally you have this uh fixed format. Normally, what we do in a non GUI project is that inside our main we'll do everything, but if we are doing a GUI, inside our main is going to be only one line. And that is going to launch the application. 
everything else is done outside the main because the one the one controlling the overall flow is going to be the start stage it's going to be this it's going to be branched from that so all of these different methods okay so now this is this marks the end of the of the class that extends the application as shown here now you want to get this get a class so this thing is actually responsible for finding out the start day and the count of day for us in the specified year and month so this is a class this is a no argument constructor so this thing construct in an instance of object for this class and then it has this uh, it has this basic four functions here so this function tells you if the current year is leap year so this is a condition for leap year because this is a condition itself it returns either true or false it's going to be just attached to the return statement here and you can search online about the conditions of a leap year so this is just a, a boolean representation of that conditions and then you have a total number of days so you want to have year and month starting from the year 1800 so what this means is that this is a precondition we know that uh, in the January 1st of year 1800 it's going to be a Wednesday so it's going to be coded by the start day of value 3 so this value of 3 is important we're going to use it in our code later okay starting from the year 1800 smaller than the year input it's going to be recording if it's leap year this number of days if it's not this number of days and this is going to be implemented up until for example if you input 2022 the first loop is going to be run until the year 2021 and the year 2022 it's going to be in this loop here so this is going to go through the months so you can see get number of days in month and the year is the same throughout but the month is changing according to this variable so finally the total represents the total number of days from starting all the way to here so why do you need this is that you need to know the start day of the particular month and the start day of the particular month is actually uh, decided by this so you get the total number of days you plus 3 plus 3 meaning you have a initially start day of 3 Wednesday so if you plus 3 it's going to be it's going to be the count is going to be until the day you want and then percent percent modulus by 7 is that uh, for example you have 3 modulus 7 it's going to be 3 if you have 10 modulus 7 it's going to be 3 also because a Venice day with a week in front which is plus 7 is still a Venice day so if you modulus it by 7 both are going to give you a result of Venice day this is what it actually means and then this get number of days in months is just a very simple condition of determining how many days in that month so if you if your month is one of these six it's going to be 31 days these are going to have it 30 days else it's going to be uh, only the month of February left so it's going to be if it's leap year February is going to be 29 days else 28 so this is what this class does it has these four basic methods here okay so when we call this class so when we call this class we actually uh, initiate a object called curriculum here and then you can see curriculum dot dot is an access operator so it access the get number of days in month method inside this cst class 
and with the arguments of year and month. So it's going to pass the argument there and get the total day and the start day. So you can see they are calling different different methods. So this is the entire code explained. Uh, hope you find the explanation clear. And hope your program is doing everything fine too. If you are trying to implement. Okay, so you are having you're going to have a number of these files recorded in your uh directory. In my case it's going to be uh, the default default path of these recordings is going to be this. So you can see there's a there's a number of entries here. Okay, so inside here this is our node. And some of these files are empty, I believe, because we click on the date and we haven't typed in anything. Okay, so you can see they are actually stored here. This is a new node. 2020 month third first day. And this this picture is going to be the background picture we used in the program. So this is what it means. It actually stores files on your computer and later it, it, it access the file here so that even after you terminate the program the record is saved so this is what the program means so hope you find this video helpful and good luck in your studies uh, thank you for watching this video